Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set up, perform, and program the Copenhagen Plank to improve eccentric adductor strength and reduce the prevalence and risk of groin problems based on the research. The Copenhagen adduction exercise is typically described as a partner exercise, so it can be performed on the field or elsewhere without equipment to maximize implementation and adherence. The following instructions come from Cerner et al. in 2013. The player is lying on the side of the non-dominant leg with one forearm as support on the floor and the other arm placed along the body. The dominant leg is held in approximately the height of the hip of the partner, who is holding the leg with one hand supporting the ankle and the other supporting the knee. The player then raises the body from the floor and the non-dominant leg is adducted so that the feet touch each other and the body is in a straight line. The body is then lowered halfway to the ground while the foot of the non-dominant leg is lowered so that it just touches the floor without using it for support. It is done over the course of six seconds, three seconds up and three seconds down and would be performed on both sides. The exercise can be performed independently using a barbell, bench, chair, or some other object, but to stay true to the research, the top leg should be positioned at an angle that's above parallel to the ground so the execution remains the same. Why this exercise specifically? Tyler et al. in 2001 found that professional ice hockey players with weaker adductor muscles were more likely to experience an adductor strain during the season. Mosler et al. in 2018 reported that having lower than normal eccentric adductor strength was a significant risk factor for adductor-related groin injuries in professional male soccer players. And a 2021 paper by Esteve et al. found that higher preseason strength on the long lever adductor squeeze test reduces the risk of groin problems in the new in-season. Cerner and colleagues suggested that exercises where the adductor longus muscle is working eccentrically seem important to consider, especially in prevention, as this resembles the situation where the muscle tendinous structures are at the highest risk of injury. Essentially, it's a dynamic, high-intensity exercise that matches the proposed injury mechanism and elicits high muscle activity of the adductor longus. But it's not just theoretical. In 2019, Heroy et al. implemented an adductor strengthening program that reduced the prevalence and risk of groin problems in male football players by 41%. The training protocol built up sets and reps over the course of the preseason before tapering and attempting to maintain that progress during the season. Since it's difficult to know what's optimal or the minimum effective dose, a recent editorial by Ashui and Thorborg tried to shed light on this topic by examining the five papers that have investigated the effect of different training volume of the Copenhagen adduction exercise on eccentric hip adduction gains in male football players. Too little volume, as evidenced by Dawkins et al. in 2021, where they had athletes perform one set of five to 15 repetitions two days per week resulted in 0% change in eccentric hip adduction strength. But there is a dose-response relationship with more volume and higher relative intensities leading to greater changes in eccentric hip adduction strength. For example, here's a protocol by Ashui et al. in 2016 where they gradually increased sets and reps over the course of eight weeks and found a 36% increase in strength. The authors of the editorial state that it seems plausible that a higher training volume and strength gains may be associated with lower risk of groin problems. In addition, the preventative effect seemed highest in the beginning of the in-season, where the strength gains were more likely highest. Thus, adding a booster strength training period later during the season, on top of the low-dose maintenance in-season training, can be relevant to promote strength gains. What if you can't perform the Copenhagen adduction exercise in the manner described earlier? Well, there are tons of regressions that can help you build up to it, so here are just a few considerations. You can start from a lower height so that your leg is parallel to the ground, you can perform the exercise with the top knee bent, bottom knee bent, or both knees bent. You can perform isometrics for 15 to 60 second holds, or you can use a combination of these options. As you get stronger, you can progress to the more traditional version. I'm often asked if other exercises that challenge the adductors are sufficient for reducing their risk of groin problems, and the answer is that we just don't know. Theoretically, hip adduction with an elastic band or cable resistance has potential since it elicits high activation of the adductor longus. Additionally, Kahavi et al. in 2018 investigated a sliding hip exercise and found that it was effective at significantly improving eccentric hip adductor strength. And obviously, Tony's no Jean-Claude Van Damme.
In summary, although the Copenhagen adduction exercise doesn't look like what many consider to be a functional exercise, when dosed appropriately, it elicits desirable adaptations such as increased eccentric hip adductor strength and has been shown to reduce the risk of groin problems. If you're interested in how you might implement this into a team setting or on your own, check out the free resources on our website that I'll link in the description and our other YouTube videos on the topic. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please tap that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave any questions or comments down below. Peace.